I'm Gray Johnson, Assistant Director at the Atlanta Council's Global Energy Center, and I'm here today with Spencer Dale, Group Chief Economist at BP, to discuss BP's statistical review of World Energy 2019, which launched um, two days ago and is launching live today at the Atlantic Council. Spencer, thanks so much for being hey, here today. Pleased, pleased to be here again. So we're here to talk about the stats review, so let's start generally. Um, what is the stats review and who is it meant to inform? So BP have been producing the statistical review for the last 68 years um, and it provides, I think, the reference source on global energy statistics um, around the world. So it's for, it is used extensively by governments, um, by the energy industry, by commentators, to just have a, to have a shared understanding of what happened in the energy industry last year and over the last 50 or 60 years. We will all disagree on, on how to interpret that data, the implications for the future, but at least we can start by having the same data source. And all these data are available free of charge. Just go to bp.com download the data into your Excel spreadsheets and you can start um, analyzing away. And at the beginning, you kind of provide some analysis of the overall data and you describe energy in 2018 as an unsustainable path. And I think you're referencing this growing societal demand for climate action versus where we see the energy data actually going. Um, can you kind of elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, so when you when we launch the, the stats review each year, you try and sort of think, what's the big issue? And sometimes you have to work hard to think about uh, what's a particular issue this year. Um, but in 2018, it was clear. So at a time when around the world there's growing societal concerns about climate change, growing societal demands for action on climate change, the data on energy demand last year, the growth in energy demand, and the growth in carbon emissions from energy grew at their fastest rate for years. So there's sort of a growing mismatch between the hopes of society and the reality in terms of where the data are actually going. And sort of that, what do we make of that mismatch and how worried should we be, I think is a key theme from this year's statistical review. And what's behind this growing mismatch between hopes and reality? Yeah, so it, what's even more puzzling in terms of those energy growth last year was, if anything, the pace of economic growth in the world slowed slightly in 2018. Energy prices tended to pick up. So both of those factors should have pulled down on the growth of energy demand last year. But instead, we saw an acceleration. Digging into the data, it seems that much of that is related to weather effects. So in a number of key countries around the world, particularly here in the US, but also in China, in Russia, we saw an increasing number of hot days and an increasing number of cold days. And the reason why that matters, because when the weather's hot, families and businesses switch to their air conditioning. When it's cold, they turn for their heaters. Both of that uses more energy. And we think that increasing number of hot and cold days was a significant factor in driving the growth of energy demand last year. And that growth of energy demand then just simply led to an increase in carbon emissions from energy. And so looking ahead, this does sound worrisome. And is it all gloom and doom for the energy transition? Um, so how much of these weather effects will, t will tend to be um, transitory and how much will persist, I think, is unclear. The, the underlying picture, though, I think is a worrying picture. And the underlying picture is one where carbon emissions are continuing to rise, where to achieve that trans those transition to a low carbon energy system, as envisaged by the Paris Climate Goals, we need carbon emissions um, to fall really quite sharply. And so there's a growing distance between the path we're on and, and, and the path we need to get on if we're going to go to achieve those Paris climate goals, which is why we sort of talk about us being on, on an unstable path. And you and BP have been doing this stats review for quite some time. Did you have um, a new trend or trends that caught you off guard um, in 2018? And kind of what's the most significant takeaway from that as we look into the rest of the year? So I think the you know, big, 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 big picture point number one is this sort of strong growth in energy demand and carbon emissions. I think that's very significant. A couple of other really fascinating things was last year in the US, the US achieved a quite, quite unique double first, which was oil production here in the US last year grew more quickly in a year than in any country ever seen ever. And in addition to that, natural gas production last year in the US grew more quickly in a year than, than any seen in any country anywhere in the world. So the US last year recorded the largest annual increases in both oil production and gas production in a single year in a single country here in the US. And so this just underpins the enormous importance of the US shale revolution in transforming both the structure of the US economy 
but also the, the dynamics of global oil and gas markets. So it's, this, is, this is a fundamental change happening here in real time here in the U.S. Thus far in 2019, we've seen a lot of macroeconomic and geopolitical uncertainty. So when you and I sit down next year and talk about the, uh, the 2020 stats review, what do you think is going to be the storyline that has dominated um, the story of, of the data? Yes, and so it's always hard. I mean, I always say we don't have a crystal ball. Um, and in some sense, the, the beauty of the data in the stats review is that da those data tell the history mm -hmm. for us. Two or three big uncertainties going forward. I mean, one uncertainty is um, the pace of economic growth in the world has clearly slowed. There's been a slowing in economic momentum. Some of that related, or a big chunk of that related to the increasing trade disputes that we're seeing. So how big will be that slowdown mm -hmm. in economic growth with that, because that will feed through into um, energy demand. I think a second big story on within oil markets is there some significant uncertainty in terms of the scale of supply disruptions, particularly related to some of the economic and political turbulence we're seeing in Venezuela, which is still producing a significant amount of oil, and in addition to how successful the US administration will be in reducing ex oil exports from Iran. That's a big uncertainty. The scale of that leads, is a, leads a big question mark over oil markets. And I think in natural gas markets, we've seen a very significant expansion of liquefied natural gas, uh, LNG, over the last few years. It's quite conceivable for the next year or so that we could have a sort of very um, well-supplied market. And so there's a possibility that, that, um, that some of that supply capacity may need to be curtailed uh, over the next year or two. And, I, and if that were the case, that would be a big issue in terms of liquefied natural gas markets. So I think there will be plenty to talk about um, this time next year when we really the next edition of the stats I'm review. sure there will be no shortage. And um, as Spencer said, there's a lot to watch uh, for the rest of the year in terms of energy markets. Um, be sure to check out the Atlantic Council website and YouTube channel for the live stream of today's event, where Spencer will give the full presentation um, of the Stats Review 2019. Thanks. Thank you, Spencer. Thank you.